Lecture 5th Of Faith In our former lectures we treated of the being, character, perfections, and attributes of God. What we mean by perfections is, the perfections which belong to all the attributes of His nature. We shall, in this lecture, speak of the Godhead, we mean the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are two personages who constitute the great matchless, governing, and supreme power over all things, by whom all things were created and made, that are created and made, whether visible or invisible, whether in heaven, on earth, or in the earth, under the earth, or throughout the immensity of space. They are the Father and the Son. The Father being a personage of spirit, glory, and power, possessing all perfection and fullness. The Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, a personage of tabernacle, made or fashioned like unto man, or being in the form and likeness of man, or rather, man was formed after his likeness and in his image. He is also the express image and likeness of the personage of the Father, possessing all the fullness of the Father, or the same fullness with the Father, being begotten of Him, and was ordained from before the foundation of the world to be a propitiation for the sins of all those who should believe on His name, and is called the Son because of the flesh, and descended in suffering below that which man can suffer, or in other words, suffered greater sufferings and was exposed to more powerful contradictions than any man can be. But notwithstanding all this, He kept the law of God and remained without sin showing thereby that it is in the power of man to keep the law and remain also without sin. And also, that by him a righteous judgment might come upon all flesh, and that all who walk not in the law of God may justly be condemned by the law and have no excuse for their sins. And he being the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, and having overcome, received the fullness of the glory of the Father, possessing the same mind with the Father, which mind is the Holy Spirit that bears record of the Father and the Son, and these three are one, or in other words, these three constitute the great matchless, governing, and supreme power over all things, by whom all things were created and made that were created and made. And these three constitute the Godhead and are one. The Father and the Son possessing the same mind, the same wisdom, glory, power, and fullness, filling all in all. The Son being filled with the fullness of the mind, glory, and power, or in other words, the Spirit, glory, and power of the Father, possessing all knowledge and glory, in the same kingdom. Sitting at the right hand of power, in the express image and likeness of the Father, a mediator for man, being filled with the fullness of the mind of the Father, or in other words, the Spirit of the Father, which Spirit is shed forth upon all who believe on His name and keep His commandments. And all those who keep His commandments shall grow up from grace to grace and become heirs of the heavenly kingdom and joint heirs with Jesus Christ possessing the same mind, being transformed into the same image or likeness, even the express image of Him who fills all in all, being filled with the fullness of His glory, and become one in Him, even as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. From the foregoing account of the Godhead which is given in His revelations, the saints have a sure foundation laid for the exercise of faith unto life and salvation through the atonement and mediation of Jesus Christ by whose blood they have a forgiveness of sins and also a sure reward laid up for them in heaven, even that of partaking of the fullness of the Father and the Son through the Spirit. As the Son partakes of the fullness of the Father through the Spirit, so the saints are, by the same Spirit, to be partakers of the same fullness, to enjoy the same glory, for as the Father and the Son are one, so in like manner the saints are to be one in them, through the love of the Father, the mediation of Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit they are to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Questions and Answers on the Foregoing Principles Question 1. Of what do the foregoing lectures treat? Answer. Of the being, perfections, and attributes of the deity. Question 2. What are we to understand by the perfections of the deity? Answer. The perfections which belong to his attributes. Question 3. How many personages are there in the Godhead? Answer. 2. The Father and the Son. Question 4. How do you prove that there are two personages in the Godhead? Answer. By the Scriptures. Genesis 2 paragraph 8. And the Lord God said unto the Only Begotten, who was with Him from the beginning, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and it was done. Genesis 2 paragraph 19. And the Lord God said unto the Only Begotten, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. 
John 9 paragraph 19. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Question 5. What is the Father? Answer, He is a personage of glory and of power. Question 6. How do you prove that the Father is a personage of glory and of power? Answer, Isaiah 22 paragraph 1. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. 1 Chronicles 12 paragraph 12. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory. Psalms 29 paragraph 1. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. Psalm 79 paragraph 3. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. Romans 1 paragraph 4. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men. Secondly, of power. 1 Chronicles 12 paragraph 12. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, and the power, and the glory. Jeremiah 13 paragraph 3. Ah! Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the earth and the heavens by Thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for Thee. Deuteronomy 2 paragraph 7. And because He loved Thy fathers, therefore He chose their seed after them and brought them out in His sight with His mighty power. 2 Samuel 10 paragraph 9. God is my strength and power. Job 10 paragraphs 3 through 4. He stretches out the north over the empty place, and hangs the earth upon nothing. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holds back the face of his throne and spreads his cloud upon it. He has compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. He divides the sea with his power and by his understanding he smites through the proud. By his spirit he has garnished the heavens. His hand has formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Question 7. What is the sun? Answer. First, he is a personage of tabernacle. Question 8. How do you prove it? Answer. John 9 paragraph 7. Jesus says unto him, Have I been so long time with you and yet have you not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say then, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Secondly, and being a personage of tabernacle was made or fashioned like unto man, or being in the form and likeness of man. Philippians 1 paragraph 7. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hebrews 1 paragraph 5. Forasmuch then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Thirdly, he is also in the likeness of the personage of the Father. Hebrews 1 paragraph 1. God who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Again, Philippians 1 paragraph 7. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Question 9. Was it by the Father and the Son that all things were created and made that were created and made? Answer, it was. Colossians 1 paragraphs 3 through 4. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, principalities, or powers? 
All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Genesis 2 paragraph 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 1 paragraph 1. God has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Question 10. Does he possess the fullness of the Father? Answer, he does. Colossians 1 paragraph 4. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians 1 paragraph 7. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ephesians 1 paragraph 3. Which is his, Christ's, body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Question 11. Why was he called the Son? Answer, because of the flesh. Luke 1 paragraph 6. That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Matthew 2 paragraph 4. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Question 12. Was he ordained of the Father? from before the foundation of the world, to be a propitiation for the sins of all those who should believe on his name? Answer, he was. 1 Peter 1 paragraph 4. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifested in these last times for you. Revelation 4 paragraph 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 1 Corinthians 1 paragraph 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden mystery which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Question 13. Do the Father and the Son possess the same mind? Answer, they do. John 5 paragraph 5. I, Christ, can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. John 5 paragraph 14. For I, Christ, came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6 paragraph 29. I, Christ, and my Father are one. Question 14. What is this mind? Answer, the Holy Spirit. John 9 paragraph 13. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me, Christ. Galatians 1 paragraph 13. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts. Question 15. Do the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit constitute the Godhead? Answer, they do. Let the student commit this paragraph to memory. Question 16. Does the believer in Christ Jesus, through the gift of the Spirit, become one with the Father and the Son, as the Father and the Son are one? Answer, they do. John 9 paragraph 21. Neither pray I for these, the apostles alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as Thou, Father, art in me, and I in Thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that Thou hast sent me. Question 17. Does the foregoing account of the Godhead lay a sure foundation for the exercise of faith in Him unto life and salvation? Answer, it does. Question 18. How do you prove it? Answer, by the third paragraph of this lecture, let the student commit this also, 